Good morning, guys. How you doing? It's Friday. Uh, man, I I got a fun one today for you. Uh, this one's kind of cool, so we're going to get into this word. I want to pray um, real quick. He gave me a word for somebody, for, for people that are watching this, okay? He said there's a ligament deterioration in some of the people that are watching this, uh, like, like, uh, bone mass, ligament deterioration, stuff like that. And I'm going to pray over you guys for your healing, but he was showing me also, it's not always about what we don't take in our body, like not eating Big Macs and Dairy Queen. Okay. A lot of times it's what we do take into our body. So it's the building blocks. God sets everything else, everything up like that so that we have <clears throat> health and order. Um, and so when we're done with this video, when you get done, go on the go on Google and look it up and just Google search what's good for bone health. OK, let's start doing that. Magnesium's really good. Getting a good amount of sun, vitamin D. Um, and then glucosamine and the other stuff, uh, beef, beef chondroitin. It's like the stuff you, the powder you put in shakes. Okay. If you eat chicken wings, eat the knuckles off the chicken wings. It's good for you. Okay. Stuff like that. But let's pray. Let's get into this word. And then, um, God's going to anoint this word. He's going to bless you guys with healing. Father, we come before you. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We love you, God. We, we are, he just said together. We are together as as believers in jesus christ god we lift up the bride of christ to you um we just bless them father in the mighty name of jesus i remit uh any sin uh that would cause wearing down on people's bodies um self-hatred hatred of others uh uh disappointment god we ask you to pluck that out by the root um that's not our name that's not what you've called us for remove it as far as the east is from the west we remit that wow something big just broke off and god i pray that you would uh bless everybody's bodies with uh with health restoration and love god fill us with your love show us the good foods that we would eat and just bring us in a proper alignment with those things that we would just naturally want to eat the healthy stuff the healthy stuff would taste good and we would have that as a confirmation that we're on the right track Show them little supplements that they may need uh, and just give them that discernment that they would know in their knower that that's what they're supposed to take. God, anoint this word. Speak through me from the spirit and not from the flesh. We bless your holy name. We praise you. We love you. Um, and if they're in a place of, of where they need help from others, where they're relying on others, uh, put it on their hearts too. We, we dedicate those people to you that they would just provide proper nutrition for whoever this is in Jesus name. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Today we were in, uh, Psalm 63. He had me in that when I got up this morning and I just, I, I declare and decree it over me and my house. And that's what I do when I read Psalms. Um, and then he had me in first Thessalonians two. There's a, a quick little hitter in here. Uh, it is, let's see. Paul is just talking about taking the gospel to people and just all the the attacks and stuff like that that he got from people. Um, I was going through it, and one thing that did stick out to me was just, just watching and avoiding uh, any kind of selfish ambition on anything, guys. And I'm going to be honest with you, even with the YouTube stuff, I mean, it's really easy to get sucked into... You want you want to you want to see like a, a climb of uh, you want to be successful, you know, and it, it makes you feel like you're being heard and everything else. But as I've said before, and I say it again, this is a even if one person gets fed, that's that's all that matters. And there's honestly there's there's like instant gratification when people get hits and stuff on YouTube. It, it hits, it triggers your dopamine receptors. And you know, what the Lord did with me was I, I, I did, I started watching it too much and I'd be like, you know, Oh, okay, cool. And it was fun. So what I do is I just shelf the phone. I don't, I, and he's like, you're done. Like, this is, you know, 
this has drifted into idolatry with this phone. And so what I do is I put it up at eight o'clock at night and I, and I haven't been checking it. Once I committed it to God, I don't do it anymore. Um, which is really cool. That's all him. That's his grace. Uh, I don't even think about it. Like these last, I don't know, since I did it, it's been just smooth sailing. So praise God for that. Um, and if that's something that you've struggled with, like too much YouTube or something like that, just shelf it. Uh, we, we lift it up to you, God, and remove that desire or whatever so that it's just healthy in Jesus' name. Any addiction that, that is unhealthy in Jesus' name. All right. Um, that's what he was showing me there. And then he also showed me, uh, it says their conversion. It's First Thessalonians 2.13. It says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but at it, as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Check this out. He just dropped something else on me on this. Um, <clears throat> this is what I have. The word only gives power to those who believe. It's like, uh, have you guys ever seen those 3D things that you look at? You watch on a wall, they're like a 3D picture. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, I see it. It's an elephant, you know, pushing a, a bowling ball or something like that. And you're like, no, I don't, I don't see anything. You know, you got cross eyes. Hey, what is it? I don't get it. I don't get it. And it, other people get it and some people don't. It's like one of those things. It's, it's only like some, some people get it revealed. The way you get God's word revealed to you is you believe. You believe that it's God's word. And this is what he was showing me. It is an iOS update for your soul. Your soul gets washed by the word of God. This is what it is to be to have a renewed mind, okay? The process of renewing your mind. It's getting washed with reprogramming. You're getting reprogrammed so that you're in alignment with God's will. But it only works for those who actually believe it. So if you're reading the Bible and you don't actually believe it, it's not really going to make a whole lot of sense. Like you're going to read it, but it's it's not going to make sense to you. You're not going to get it. I'm telling you, when I read the Bible, it's like boom, 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 boom. It That is called rhema. And rhema is a deeper understanding, a knowing in your knower. It's having a, a revelatory uh, gifting and impartation of things, the weightier things of God. And that is only unlocked to those who actually believe. Um, I, Guys, I go back to this. I know it's a bad representation, but this is the enemy camp. But if they look at a spell book, okay, the spell book, they get power from that. Christians get power from the Bible in the same exact way. It's like a spell book, but it's God's spell book. So you know it's in alignment with his goodness and the goodness of God. And you're supposed to get power for 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 healthy things. He showed me um, when I when I first prayed on this, or when I first brought this up, when I said, "Oh, that's good." I used to go in uh, every week to the to the mental institution, Copper Springs, down in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, on the on, way out on the west side. Um, it's a detox mental health facility. There was this girl. She was so sweet. She was like she was a mama. She was like three months sober i saw her twice she go. she was getting off she had the same pill addiction that i did she got hooked on perks and she had babies and stuff like that but she was she was just a good she was a good mom she just she just got caught you know it was just one of those things where she got stuck in this thing and or there she gets sober and then about three months after I, I was continuing to bring that thing that that meeting in there and she came back and she had anxiety and what's funny is that that well it's not funny but the same exact thing happened to me it happens to most people in sobriety for about the three to six month mark when you get sober that's when those things st set in and you'll start getting um, anxiety and stuff there was a buddy of mine Anthony Kaluger I don't know, Anthony, if you ever watch this, God bless you, bro. Reach out to me on, on uh, Church of Lost Sheep. I'd love to see how you're doing. Anyways, um, we used to, we got sober at the exact same time. And so it was cool to have somebody else that was going through the exact same stuff as I was. Because you're like, hey, is this normal? Yeah, it's normal. Okay. But she came in 
and she had fear and anxiety. And I literally just, all I did was speak the word. I said, no, that's contrary to what God's word says. He says, you're not given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. Boom. It broke off of that girl right there. Something just broke off right there when I prayed that. Somebody's going to receive that word, that revelation, that rhema. I can feel it. You're not given a spirit of fear. You're given power, love, and sound mind. Okay? When it did that, she got delivered completely from that anxiety that she was suffering from after she got sober. So that's what he was showing me. But she believed. She believed the word the same way these guys did. Right? They believed what Paul was saying. They believed that this is the word of God. This, this word will not return nil or void. This is the word of God. So if it's not hitting you for some reason fall to your knees and ask the Lord to help you with your faith, to help you doubt the doubt, help your unbelief. Okay. Grow your faith, whatever it takes, guys, you need this, you need this, 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 this pump to get you going. Okay. Um, we don't, we don't deal with unbelief. That's not our life as a believers. We're supposed to have bold faith. And that's what this ministry is about is strengthening and emboldening believers, right? Joy of the Lord is our strength and we are to have strong faith. Okay. Um, and then the last thing he's been talking to me so much about Catholics. I like, I've been getting this over and over and over and over and over again. And I, and finally I was like, why are you showing me this? What, what? And he said, he said, there's a point no. And I said, okay, what's the point? He said, they're just like Bethel church. I'm like, okay. What I said about Bethel Church the other day was they're reaching they're reaching people, they're giving them faith, and they're saved. Like these their Catholics are just as saved as anybody else, right? They got some weird doctrinal stuff that needs to get straightened out. A lot of their stuff makes sense, how they have structure and order and stuff like that within the church. And if it wasn't run by corrupt men, it probably would be fairly effective right but the problem is is that there's a bunch of corruption in that church but it does not mean that the people who are catholics are not saved they're saved by grace through faith there's a ton of catholics that i know that have the baptism of the holy spirit my own grandmother my dad's mom right i had i've received this revelation she was a praying woman behind the scenes. I don't think anybody even knew it. Like if you knew the Taylor brood, man, like you would know that you would know they're kind of, they're ruffians, you know what I mean? But like my buddy Ian growing up, his mom, I was thinking about her last night. She was praying the blood of Jesus over all of us. And we were some knuckleheads back in the day. I mean, like we, we got into some trouble. We, we did some dirt, but Ian's mom, Mary was blessing us and praying the blood let them come home safe we get them home safe we're out at the bars you know and i mean there was some stuff we saw that it was bad i mean people could have gone to jail prison lifetime all of that and i know we had people standing in the gap and i and and i know my grandmother who was a catholic i don't think she was going to church every every week or anything like that but she prayed she had a prayer life and here's the most important thing that he was showing me if you honor Jesus as God, if you honor him as Lord, he honors those who honor him. That's what this is about, guys, is honoring him as the Lord, knowing that you submit yourself to the Lord Jesus. And the last thing, I'm going to show you uh, Seamus McCaffrey, okay? This is a little, little thing that happened. When I was a kid... Um, my buddy, one of my best friends in high school, like after high school, he's he's a professional fighter out of Arizona. He's a famous guy. Fought big time in USC, UFC, one of the biggest UFC fights of all time. Like it went viral, all this other stuff, right? He and I, I was working at a school district. And he was coaching football with me, coaching a little flag football team with me at that time. And we, uh, one of the guys at the school that I worked at, he had um, gotten hired as the head of security for Seamus McCaffrey in Phoenix. It was uh, Rosie McCaffrey's Irish pub over on like 16th Street in Camelback. 
and they were opening that for St. Patrick's Day weekend, and they had a bunch of work that needed to get done. Like, it was like he was trying to finish before St. Patty's Day, and they had, like, you know, probably two months' worth of work that they finished right before, right on time. So he hired, he just called up everybody he could and hired all these people and just pumped a bunch of money into this to get it open for St. Patty's Day because he knew it was going to be like a rager over there, you know. And so we go over and we work there and um, they got it done. They got it opened. And me and my buddy were like the two head security guards. Well, that guy that hired us for security, he was kind of shady, right? And we we were all like drinking on the job we were like stashing liquor upstairs at rosie mccaffrey's and we were i mean we were getting hammered at at this job and then like we had to toss some people out oh and these guys were like some of these guys were kind of kind of shady like ira guys you know and they're like oh there's some british in here like we had to toss these these brits that came into the bar just because they were british i mean like it was kind of funny right but uh that guy seamus mccaffrey was he was a devout catholic right he ran a pub he was a bar owner everything else but he he he, he ran this right so anyways I, I, we we kind of like ripped him off. We got paid for this. We were supposed to get paid for a job. We did the job, but it was like we were screwballing, man. We were getting loaded and hammered and everything else. And it just wasn't good, right? That's not good character. Fast forward to the first year that I get the job up in Flagstaff where, where we go do these NAU, uh, ASU jobs where we clean uh, we clean the dorm rooms. We, we do cleaning, painting, and carpet cleaning. And the first year that I did it, I had like all these flaky people, man, that like they 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 were just milking the clock and I was paying them good money. And I pay really good money because I, I get so convicted that people don't make good money that like I, at my own detriment, I pay people uh, really good money. Right. Because um, <clears throat> I know God makes it up. Four or no, I'm sorry, three times that when that job was going on, I saw Seamus on a license plate. Then I saw one that said for Seamus and then, uh, uh, like heart Seamus or something like that. They were three separate license plates that said Seamus. And, and at this time I needed to make another amends with, uh, like my 12 step stuff. Right. And I knew that I had to go make an amends with this guy, Seamus, Seamus McCaffrey. But here's the thing, like the last one I saw was, it was for Seamus, right? The Lord had Seamus' back. Like the same thing that happened to, that I did to him got done to me. Like the exact same thing. And I was like, oh, I was all convicted. So I went down to Rosie McCaffrey's and I tried to get a hold of that guy. And uh, he was in California or something like that. I wrote him a letter and just, just apologized. I was like, hey, I ripped you off. This is what I did. I was a, I was a punk kid. Like I shouldn't have done this. And then just so you know, like God's got your back. This is what happened. And I told him what happened. Um, and he was a Catholic. He was a, he was just a good old Irish Catholic, you know, Irish Catholic, but he honored God, right? He honored God. That's what he did. God had his back. So guys, we need to break down these division lines and all this other stuff. Doctrinal error is serious, but there are brothers and sisters in Christ in all these different religions, okay? And and if you honor God as God and you fear him enough, you come humbly, humbly before him, okay? So God bless you guys. Take this stuff to the Lord. Um, we'll see you next time.